and then the ROI, which is 240 minus the cost, 15,000, divided by the cost, 15,000 times 100 is that crazy cool number of dollar in, $12 out. So $12 profit. Dollar in. Again, don't forget, we just want 200% ROI. We want just dollar and two dollars profit. If you're doing that, you're, you know, spend as much money as you can. You're four times that. Welcome to my legal academy, helping lawyers work smart, scale fast, and enjoy life. So I have 222 leads so far. Um, I don't have the sign up numbers at my fingertips right now, but it's a, it's approximately 30. And that, that includes the last like three that retainers ever sent out and people that I still have to call, I mean, not people that I still have to call back, but uh, retainers that were sent out in the last three days. So approximately 30, uh, over 222. But my beginning of April was kind of shitty because I was on vacation. I'm still doing it myself. So my my conversion rate there was crappy because I was calling from Jamaica. It didn't really work out too well. <laughs> but it's still coming in. The leads, the Instagram and Facebook comes in a lot on weekends or Friday night and Saturday night. And so I wake up and I tackle those which are pretty good, uh, but it seems to be slower during the week. Anecdotal, that's just what I found anecdotal. I, I hooked up with uh, Yevani, that, that fellow, and he did some Google LSA, and, I'm, and that's that's starting to work as well. I'm getting a lot of calls from the website or from my uh, intaker forms um, from the website, and that must be Google placements. It's interesting that I can see, I don't know, how, I don't really understand how this is working, but. I get a lot from Western Illinois and Western Southern Illinois, like St. Louis area and uh, and Western. I don't know how that pop, that's popping up, but it's working. Some of the bottlenecks are contracts. I'm getting a, a lot of people that don't sign e-contracts e or e-documents. So that's been sort of a bottleneck for me. And then, you know, and then I've got to chase them after the retainers are out. Um, you know, did you get it? Did you send it back yet? Did you get it back yet? So that's a hard part. Um, I'm doing a lot of, but I did sign up for this online uh, service as well. So I, I, I hired an intaker who's starting at the end of the month. Um, and so she can either do snail mail or use this online service that I have to send out the contracts as well. And also hired over the weekend, an attorney that's coming on board at the end of the month as well. So I'll be able to uh, free myself up a little bit from some of this. So I need three arms right now to juggle everything going on. And then I, my goal is to hire another attorney, like a young attorney right out of law school uh, to help out. I hired more a more experienced PI lawyer. She'll be able to, to step in the shoes for all these cases that I'm signing up as well. Um, and then she and I will be able to do the bigger cases together. That I have. And yeah, so that's where I'm at. Nice. Yeah. Um, can you quickly look, look up the cost? At least bare minimum, bare minimum. We just need to know the cost requisition. Yeah. That's, let's just get at least get that. So see if you can look that up. All right, uh, 18 grand. 18 grand from January 19th to May 2nd. Okay. 18 grand minimum, so 18K by 30, 600 CPI. Okay, great. Still good. Again, don't forget, let's just say you have a, you know, up to, you're willing to go up to, let's just say, this much, let's just say. Yeah. So, so far, so good. The other thing um, is the value. That way you kind of, again, the more numbers, the merrier. Right. Approximate. You don't have to tell me now. I mean, let's. I mean, if you did approximately on average, what do you expect to be the value per at least, client? At least eight grand, I would say. Yeah. Okay. So eight K value per client, and just for yourself, that comes out to let's just say eight times thirty. So you kind of have an idea of your potential sure. uh, ROI to kind of incentivize you to kind of get on the intakers and hire the lawyers and all that stuff. Uh, more is 240, 240K value. And then the ROI is 240 minus the cost, 15,000 divided by the cost, 15,000 times 100 is that crazy cool number of dollar in, $12 out. So $12 profit, dollar in, $12 profit. Again, don't forget, we just want 200% ROI. We want just dollar and $2 profit. If you're doing that, you're, you know, spend as much money as you can. You're four times that. Yeah. So. And, and that eight grand, that 8K is just, that's super conservative. 
you know. Good, yeah. And we take we want to take the conservative number. It could be potentially more, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Conservative. So good. Uh, what are you doing with the intakers? So I hired one. She starts at the end of the month, and then my VAs. Uh, I'm gonna use them to uh, bring on more intakers. Um, right now, they're doing strictly paralegal stuff for me, um, and it's it's going really well. Actually, those VAs they're getting you know as as they get more used to it and, and whatnot, it's going it's going good. So good. one one intaker is here in Chicago, so she's live like a human. Um, just I'm paying her hourly, um, and then the other intaker will probably be in PI, the Philippines, um, and ideally to, to pick up some of this weekend stuff. Is this in-house one trained in sales? Yes, she, okay. she, uh, yeah, she's she's really good. She does right now. She works for a, a uh, you know, like a symphony or a theater type of thing, but uh, she's in charge of all the subscriptions, like trying to re up. So it's the exact same thing that we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Make sure part of her job offer is some kind of performance-based incentive. Yeah, bonus uh, like yeah. Yeah. yeah number of clients per month instant boost performance bam easy uh goal bare minimum um i mean the performance could tie into the to the goal yeah. that will be the goal so you know let's just say start off with a threshold let's say and then set the threat you honestly you create your own thresholds you say 10 it will be 10 if you say five she'll get to five so might as well just say 10. right so let's say 10 bare minimum let's say 13 then like 18 going up leads coming on weekends if that's the case ask her you have nothing to lose instead of working on a potential monday that could be a slow day for you for signups can you potentially instead work on saturdays or sundays uh we don't want to go to waste we have in both a mix of in-house uh, the, the you know virtual both uh, working on weekends e-contracts it's fine i think 70 80 percent of it are going to be fine for those ones as you said you know yeah you need to use some kind of thing um, but you need to set this up ASAP. This is obviously today. There shouldn't be any, should be pretty straightforward. Whenever whoever sends it out, needs to track who they sent it out. And um, whoever sends it out, puts it in their head, hey, let's schedule our signing meeting. So when you have it in your hands, I'm gonna answer all your questions for you and get it signed. Got it. So sign a post, set up a schedule, uh, schedule a second meeting call for when they receive it right then and then so it's scheduled um do you have calendly no what do you use for scheduling uh nothing i don't really schedule appointments you know um okay so you need to yeah you need to because you need to um so sign up sign up for a calendly yeah. that way you'll be able to add this intake or your intakers whatever whoever is sending out this thingy right then and then you either get them scheduled that way it uses their email and their phone number Canly has emails and text notifications just for just for that reason just for the notifications yeah they'll get a text whatever and that hey you're gonna get a call in an hour etc so set up Canly with two at least two at least two or three meeting notifications um i do have a Canly setup video when you're setting up scanly just watch this just follow it that's that chasing retainers is there going to be attrition rate you know initially before I even said just expect 50 percent for us 50 percent is like very minimal 50 percent of you said people you send out retainers if they don't sign it right then and then just assume that they're lost if you can get to 80 percent great but just you know 20 percent just you know it is what it is obviously you do your best to do it different forms, you know, the physical way or whatever, sending them the FAQ and all that stuff could help. But that's kind of, you know, go for at least getting 30% of prospects. So. Hiring attorneys, great. That's good. You're kind of, You're but this one also is very important for you is your monthly goals for the rest of the year. This is a Google Sheet kind of document, simple Google Sheet. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you're a lawyer and you're looking to work smart, scale fast and enjoy life, right below this video, you'll find a link to book a call to speak to my team so we can tell you how we've been able to help over 500 law firm owners scale their law firm. Now back to the video. First column is just the dates. 
second is like kind of like your primary goals so one of the uh, one of the columns I, I would say should be things that you can control is how much money you should spend in your different marketing sources so there's a one column for facebook ads another column should be google lsa spend things that you can control fourth column Again, I'm not just sharing this with William. The whole, the whole point of this is for you guys to be able to do this yourself too. So take out a Google Sheet. Just go to sheets.new. And you should be able to create it. So I would basically just create like this. It's a month. Then it just will be Facebook ads budget. Let's just say in April, just I spent $5,000. Well, ideally in March or in May, I would like to spend uh, up. I have to spend, let's say now I'm going to bump up to 7,500, then 10K, then stay at 10K, let's just say for maybe for three months, then ideally I want to jump to 15K, then 15K, then maybe the last three months, I want to move up to 20K. Again, the easy things that you can control. So let's make a goal out of these things. William also does Google LSA, so there might be just one specific budget just for that. But at least you have clarity. How much money do I feel like spending? No. Kind of create, a, create the plan. I mean, you're like level-headed. You can you could think logically, do it in one shot ahead of time. It's much better this way. Uh, kind of makes you a little bit more robotic, and you can over don't think it too much. Just numerical planning. So that's that. Next goal that we want to create is client signups or signups. Again, let's just say in April you did sign up ten. Okay, well let's go up by minimum conservative number is like 20%, uh, 20%. So next it should be 12, then 15, then 18 or 24 and move up from there. 20% increments, but it could also be tied to your cost per acquisition. And again, everything, let's just say for this, it's $500 cost acquisition. That way, I think actually, if you do it this way, you know, kind of gives you maybe the cost acquisition comes before. Um, that way, you could say, well, my budget is this much, and my target cost acquisition is this much, so I should expect this many signups. That makes sense. So I'll just say, I want to spend five uh, five thousand dollars. My cost acquisition is going to be five hundred dollars, so that's ten clients. Um, for seventy five hundred, let me see what it was. 100 divided by let's say 12. Well, cost acquisition I want to spend up to 6, 625 this month to get 12 clients with this much of a budget. For a $10,000 budget, I want to spend $666 to generate 15 clients. Or you're not, this one you have a benchmark of, you know, if you just with the current systems that you have, it comes out to about 600 bucks. Okay, just keep it at $600 cost acquisitions. And then with these budgets, what, how many signups it should be. And now, not only do you have a plan for what you control, you have a solid benchmark of what your cost position is. Well, okay, based on this budget of growth that I wanna, that I'm willing to allocate to, these are the expected signups that I should get. Next is actual signups. You wanna see how you did according to your goal. If you see that over here, this is five. Okay, what, then it kind of gives you a little red flag. Okay, what is going on? You probably, I'm assuming most of it is just they don't have enough intakers or you don't have a system automations or you don't spend enough. So kind of hold yourself like, uh, you know, according to whatever that goal is. And then last one is maybe settlements collected. So maybe like one of them is number of settlements uh, collected. And then the last one is like attorney's fees. Fees collected. Again, your, these are your goals. Ideally, I would like to close out. Again, you could kind of plan ahead you know, like, uh, about 10 months ago, I signed up 15, so I should uh, close out about 10 of them. Okay, so 10 settlements collected, and, and usually my average is about $8,000, uh, $8, so that should be about $8,000, $80,000 in attorney's fees collected for that month. What this forces you to do to do, again, it kind of, you see, you see the big picture, and it kind of holds you accountable to growth, right? This, you know, wasn't in 5000 let me make $5,000, spend $5,000 for the rest of the year and just stay at this level. No, I want to be able to grow. I plan ahead, write that out ahead, what I can control. I have some benchmarks that I could kind of hold myself accountable to. 
and see how I did according to that goal. If not, at the end of the month, it kind of gives me red flag or good flag, or green light. It's good, red or something's off. I'm not doing it. So maybe I should get back to re get refocus into this. And then last thing is very important. A lot of people do is what I need to do. What I need to do to grow. So let's just say for William, he said I'm hiring but this month. It's like hiring one attorney. Great. Maybe next, uh, the following month, you want to hire two intakers if things go well. These are like either hiring or it's creating, you know, setting up uh, CRM, or whatever that is, things that you can do to, to make this happen. Again, not everything has to be done now, but at least it should be in the pipeline. Of, okay, this this month, I'm focusing on just hiring one attorney. Next month, I'm going to focus on hiring two integrators. Next month, I'm going to go focus on the automation. Kind of like the hirings and the system side of things, what that is. Let's call it my goals, my financial goals, 2023. Put a reminder on the first of the month. This is like your main tracking. Essentially, this is all you could distill all your financials and all your tracks down to this. These are the big picture stuff and see how you're doing according to this plan. So these monthly goals. I know, and I know probably you're very busy, William. You have to be able to delegate at least 20% of minimum 20% of all the stuff that you're working on right now. Yeah. So be super critical. If I would do, I would put a white uh, paper on your desk. And as you're doing random things, just write out all the stuff that you're doing, kind of create a list of all the things that you're doing. And then ask yourself, can I, who can I delegate this out to basically instead. Right. And try to, your goal is to pass off as, and again, talking about mentality, kind of becoming a little robotic, whatever. But become that. Who can I delegate this to? Who can I delegate this to? So I can pass off as much as I possibly can. So that you only focus on this. Just making deals, uh, setting up new uh, client sources, to creating systems, things like that, spending more, all that stuff. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. And you're able to step away from day to day. Now you become a true, like a law firm owner, which is where we want you to be. Yeah.